Hello, it's Scott Manley here, out, well, braving the sun, so forgive me if I squint a little. Now, the reason, of course, uh, I'm outside is because the sun is an astronomical object. You may or may not know that, but it is very important to uh, these particular instruments. Now, these are astrolabes. They date from about 200 BC and are some of the fir world's first uh, analog computers. They were kind of like slide rules, but about 1700 years before the slide rule existed. So this one here is made by a local artist in Berkeley. It's uh, made of brass, oh, you can get it in brass or pewter. This one's pewter or even gold plated. Uh, they're beautiful things. You know, if you are looking for a present for an astronomy geek and you don't know what uh, piece of hardware they might want and you think they have enough pretty pictures of stars, then an astrolabe is a pretty cool thing. This costs like $150 and you can go bigger or smaller. This one here is actually way more practical. It's made out of wood, it has been laser cut. I believe the guy that did it was uh, Tom Rosendahl and he has a, a website where you can buy these. It's a lot cheaper, it's a lot bigger and it's a lot more accurate. So uh, I'm gonna focus on this one, but just understand if you want an absolutely beautiful piece of you know astronomy art that isn't another nebula or whatever, then these are pretty cool things. They come with little uh, display stands, so yeah. This is, uh, this is what it looks like, and I can, I'll show you some of the close-ups on it, but basically it comes with two sides. The first is a thing for measuring angles here, and you can see that mine is personalized with a Kerbal on it. So what you do, of course, is you hold it like this so that gravity stabilizes it, and then you try to turn it so that the, the sun is lined up along it, and then if you rotate it just right, you can see the sun on. Oh, I've got it perfectly right. I, you probably can't see that, but... I've got that pretty accurate and I can see on my hand that the two uh, sight markers line up. <laughs> Just to be clear, you know, when you're sighting stars, you look through it. When you're sighting the sun, you use the shadow effect of it. So that gives you an angle and you can read that angle off here. This is obviously, uh, this is about 45 degrees actually. That's almost exactly 45 degrees. So now, if I want to figure out what time of day it is, I turn to this side and this side is a planisphere. So on one, oh, you've got two parts. One moves, right? So this exterior piece moves around like that. And all these little points here, these correspond to famous stars. And I'm just looking here, we have like Rigel is there, we have um, Sirius and uh, Betelgeuse. And this whole thing rotates around. Now on the other side, there are little grading markers that show you uh, elevation above the horizon. The elevation above the horizon runs around in these circles. This is essentially a sphere which is projected onto a disc, onto a flat surface. Uh, also, running vertically, you have lines of uh, angle. So this one runs. This one runs around to here, for example. Right. That is. Um, that marks like 50, uh, 90 degrees west, for example. So now that I know the sun is 45 degrees above the horizon, the next thing I need to know is where it is at this time of year. Now, the date is uh, September 30th. So I look again at this, and you'll see around the outside it has star signs l listed. Because, of course, the planispheres were originally, sorry, the planisphere, the astrolabes were originally used by astrologers who, uh, you know, they did some great measurements. Now, if I f look around for September 30th, it's just there, I line it up, and it tells me that September 30th is right in the middle of Virgo. And that might seem confusing to you pe people out there that actually know astrology, because if you look at this one, this is a much more, an a a much more ancient design. If I look for September 30th here, it's actually in the middle of Libra, right? And you may not be able to see that, but it is in the middle of Libra. Now, the reason for this, of course, is the precession of the equinoxes. As you know, the Earth wobbles on a 23,000 year cycle. And over the last 2,000 years, this means that the sun has, the sun's zodiacal houses have you know, precessed by one. So this one is actually up to date with the modern astrology, let's say. But it doesn't matter so much because all you're going to do is you're going to flip this around now. And this dial here, this big circle, 
that is inscribed with the various astrological houses as well. When I say astrological, let's be clear, that's defined as where the sun is, right? So, you know, if you're a Sagittarius, it's because the sun was in the constellation of Sagittarius when you were born. Uh, <laughs> But that just also means that you can figure out where the sun should be on this sky. See, the stars are fixed, but the sun moves through the year through this big circle. So if I find, um, and now I'm forgetting what it was, Virgo, right in the middle of Virgo, right? So Virgo is here, and I now have to rotate it so that Virgo is 45 degrees above the west horizon. So I'm going to rotate this around and look for it and it's sometimes a little stiff on these wooden ones but uh yeah about 45 degrees is right there so there i've got them lined up right over here because this is of course 45 degrees it is risen it rises in the east and now i take the this measuring device and i line it up with the day's date and bingo it actually gives me a time Right, it shows me a time because this is obviously midday. This is six a.m. This is uh, you know six p.m. and this is midnight down the bottom. So yeah, it tells me that the time is about. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> now I got to do math. Uh, yeah, it tells me it's it's just about quarter to uh, ten. But, uh, of course, we are in daylight savings time. Sorry, quarter past ten. Uh, and because we're in daylight savings time, you've got to add an hour to it. So it's about quarter past eleven. And, yeah, that's relatively accurate. Okay, I mean, I kind of... I fudged it a little. But, yeah, you can measure time with this. You can also use it similarly to say, well, at midnight, what stars will be present? Uh, so what you do, of course, is you take that marker, right? and you rotate the whole thing around so that it now lines up with the midnight marker. And uh, 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 bingo like that. Now you can see all the stars that will be visible in the sky and you map everything onto the sky using these lines as well. So this line around here, by the way, this bottom one, this is the horizon line. Everything above this is visible. And this point here, that is the, the circle there, that is the pole. So everything north of this is visible to the south. Or sorry, everything above this is visible to the south and everything in this direction is visible to the north. That's an important distinction. People sometimes get it back to back, back to front. So, you know, that's it functioning as a planisphere. It lets you know the relative locations of all the different stars. So, yeah, tonight, around about midnight, uh, I can't read what that star is, but... Because <laughs> it's all in such tiny writing and I'm getting so old and my eyes are weak. <laughs> no, th these are these are fantastic devices for learning um, astro astronomical motions. I said astrological. No, it, it works for astronomy as well. Granted, nowadays we would use software or uh, so phone apps. Phone apps are fantastic. They they do all that. And you know, with the latest iPhones now, you've got uh, augmented reality. It can do all sorts of amazing things. But this is an artifact that you can hold in your hand and play with and you can understand why the motions of stars and planets are the way they are. Now, over history, these things got more and more complicated and eventually turned into big, you know, analog computers. But this was one of the very first analog style computers. You could even argue that it was the first slide rule, although what it's really doing is trigonometric um, transformations rather than logarithmic transformations but you know yeah 1700 years before the slide rule there was the astrolabe and it could well be the first uh, slide rule so yeah um this uh, rosendahl astrolabes you can get them uh, you can get them customized to your particular latitude that's important this one is customized for san francisco latitude 38 degrees north um these ones uh because they are cast i guess they have much fewer options but you can also buy these in a set where they have different discs the insert can be replaced for different latitudes for different uh, people again these are great gifts if you have a space nerd an astronomy nerd that wants to have something pretty to hang on their wall and uh, yeah, i'm not getting any uh, <laughs> any affiliate fees or anything for this i just uh, i know that one year i was really struggling to find things that people could buy for me and guess what this one was this one was a great gift 
So yeah, check these out. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.